Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. So today, this is a special request. Someone is doing a Disneyland theme party, and uh, this is the sign, obviously. If you, I'm sure a lot of you guys recognize it. So I just am looking at the file for the first time. So the first thing that I've noticed is when I'm scrolling through this, it's a lot of pieces, and um, there's no solid background. The other thing that I did notice, and let me pull this up, sorry, is that the, the, the flags um, and the word Disneyland is not connected to this bottom part. So while I know that it might not be um, true to the sign, I would recommend moving this part to all who come to this happy place, welcome for the gold pieces to touch so that we have actually, I don't even know if that's an option because this one, is it sitting down further? Oh no, it looks like it, I can't tell if it's even. The D's not even though because look at, there's a lot of space between here as opposed to right here. So anyway, what I would recommend is to have this bottom portion touch the bottom, the top part of this, touch the bottom part of the sign so that you have one big sign. Um, so let's do that. Anyway, this is at 30 inches. So let's make this, this is wider than it is longer. So I like to pick one length to be 30. If we did the height to be 30, there's just a lot. I mean, the, the piece would be so big. So let's try 30 inches first. And let's see what happens. Oh, that's so weird that it says 30.001. So I just updated my software. I, I design space. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. All right. So we need to ungroup it. The other thing that I would recommend is the, the phrase at the bottom, the welcome sign. I would probably do that in HTV, so in heat transfer vinyl where you use a heat press or in my case I would use the mini um, the mini press. Uh, I forget what it's, I think it's just called the mini, right? So because it's so many letters and it's kind of thin in some places. I feel like this would just be easier if it's just on one piece of vinyl and we just iron it on and we call it a day. So, all right, let's pull this and move it up. So we're moving it up. And let's see. Yeah, I think that looks good. So it's touching everything. It's going to be more stable. Oh, that's too much. Oops. Let me group this piece so that it moves as one. And then, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh my, it's slow. Okay. Um, and you know what? <clears throat> Let's group this together as well. <clears throat> I feel like during the winter time, I lose my voice and that, ugh. okay. The reason why I wanted to group it is so that I can move the two pieces and then align them. So right now I wanna make sure, because this is 30 inches, right? I really want it to be touching the D touching the Y and the D over here because it's gonna give the sign stability. If you only had it touching these two places, this little thing is gonna be flapping and you just don't want that. I mean, it's gonna be a thin, thinner piece hanging, so you definitely don't want that. Um, all right, so let's move this up. So see right here, I'm touching the Y and the D over here, but I'm not touching over here. So either we pull, oh, we can't even pull down the flag because it's sep separated. Okay, so we're gonna need to move this up. Okay, so now it's touching everything. Let's grab the two items 
and go to align and we want to align center horizontally Ooh, interesting oh because this flag over here so you see how like I would have thought the center would have been more over but going past this border of the D is this flag so everything shifted over so we're gonna need to just move oops hold on so maybe something like this is actually cent centered okay so what I want to do is now that we have this in place I want to grab this whole thing and duplicate it and once it does that we'll weld it because we want a solid background where all the pieces are going to go on top of it and trust me that's so much better it's going to be so much sturdier um, and easy to handle and also if you think about it right if you don't have a piece that everything is sitting on then you're taping everything to each other it's really hard to tape things to each other um, because you have to tape from behind right so now you're lifting things up and taping from behind as opposed to just um, taping it and putting it down right because you'll have that background okay so we have all this here let's weld it and while it's welding mm -hmm. okay so now we have this solid black or in this case it's blue uh, it can be whatever color I usually use black though but in this case this background is actually going to be um, it's gonna not be visible because everything goes all the way to the edge so you're not gonna see this background I would pick Let me think about this um i'm i probably would pick a gold cardstock to match this because even though it goes all the way to the edge and it's supposed to line up perfectly <clears throat> excuse me it requires us like me as a crafter to line everything up perfectly and it just hardly ever happens right like as good and as much as i try there's going to be a little bit where it just doesn't line up perfectly so i would want this background to match whatever color that shows the most and to me it's the gold that's going around but i know gold paper is kind of expensive so if you don't want to do that um I still would recommend like maybe not gold glitter cardstock but just gold paper or like um like a yellow colored paper okay I'm gonna stop talking about the background <laughs> all right let's look at all our pieces okay um the next thing I think I would want to do is let's look at this white part so this is all of the wording yeah I would grab this and weld it so now this is all one piece that I know I'm gonna cut on vinyl and look at this it's 20.81 so technically I could cut it because I have a 12 by 24 mat I have my vinyl on a roll but now it's like one long roll. This is gonna be up to you how you wanna handle it. I'm a little bit on the frugal side at times, so I would probably wanna split this up into like three sections so that it fits more on a 12 by 12 and maybe I go 12 by, I don't know, six inches. Uh, so then like I'm just, cut, you know, taking a portion of my vinyl to cut. Um, but here's the thing that you that makes it easier if you keep it as is then it's all straight you don't need to line it up you just need to cut it um weed it and then place it on the sign so if this is for a big party um you know you're going to be looking at it and you're going to notice your mistakes i would keep it as one single piece 
um, and cut it like this, okay? So we're gonna move this aside. This is all done. And let's see what all our pieces are. Okay, so let's ungroup all this stuff and see what we have. So, ungroup. Okay, so we have this solid piece which we need to slice because it's tw almost 25 inches. So let's talk about colors for a second and what kind of paper we're gonna use. With this sign being so big and this, this little um, trim, it's all connected. It's thin though. So what I would recommend is I would do a glitter gold cardstock because it's gonna look beautiful. And also you're not gonna notice all the seams. It's, when you put it close up together and you tape it all up, you're not even gonna notice the seams. So even though this sign is 30 inches long, so that's what I would do. So this piece, I would just slice in half. Let's see what this piece is all about. Okay, so these are separated. So these little guy, the little guys are fine. So this, um okay so let's see this goes here what i would probably want to do is i would make sure that let's send the words to the front okay and oh i'm sorry no wonder i was wondering why okay hopefully this is better it's smaller but then we're not scrolling up and down okay <clears throat> I would look, so, man, okay, so let's see. It would be something like this. So it depends on how perfect you want this to be. If you're, I would use, in this section, I would probably use a blue glitter cardstock as well. So with it being darker, you're probably not gonna see the seams. I would probably also try to slice it like right where the T or the H is because look at it, it's gonna cover most of that seam. So I wanted to line this up. So let's line it up like this and let's um, align middle center. Okay, so what I would do is let's take a square. We're gonna slice up both the we're, we're most, we're gonna slice up the blue piece first. So let's unlock this and make it long. And I'm gonna zoom in just so that we can really see where we're slicing, okay? Um, all right. So I kinda wanna slice it where this H is going. So I'm gonna take this, put it right there. Because you see how the H is going to cover most of that seam. Okay, so we've got this highlighted right now. Let's hit our shift key and go over here and grab our blue. And it didn't grab. Oh, there I grabbed. And then hit slice. We don't need to slice the letters, right? Because the letter is going to fit on our vinyl to be cut. But this is what we want. So this blue sign and this one. So when we piece this together, which I'm probably not gonna do, I'm only doing the design space tutorial, when you tape this back up, just know that where the seam is, is where this H is gonna line up. So you're gonna try to cover up that seam. And if you're using blue glitter cardstock, that seam should disappear almost completely just by lining it up like this. It's gonna look really, really good. But we're gonna really make sure by lining up that H right over that seam. So let me bring that to the front so you can see again. So when you go to put this together, you're gonna put this H right there to cover up most of that seam. So what's left is like this much of a seam. You, no one's gonna notice that. All right, so same thing with this, um, with this gold piece. So let's take this same piece, unlock it. Oh, and you know what? Let's double check our sign. Okay, whew, 11.9, so this can cut. 
and 10.4. Okay, so both of those can cut. So let's make this bigger and let's see. This sign is how big? 24.847. So we need to cut it actually in three pieces because Cutting it in two, you're gonna have over 12 inches. However, actually, no, let's cut it in two. So let's be, um, let's make this, I already have it unlocked. So let's do it at 13 inches. Okay, so we wanna slice it right around here. So let's grab these two items and slice. And this is wasting paper. But, so this is 11.976, right? Okay, so what I want you to do is we know that technically it won't let us cut, right? But you can rotate this. So let's rotate this for a second and unlock this button. Oh, it gave us the new dimensions. And they brought back a feature, sorry. So let's rotate it some more. So see, as I'm rotating it, I'm changing the dimensions. Even though I, I'm not resizing it, I'm just rotating. Because the way Design Space calculates width is the most far left to the most far right. So as I'm rotating, you see how my far left is getting closer to my right. So now this same piece that I thought was what was it, almost 12 inches, is now 10 inches by 8.7. So you can cut this on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. All right, so I'm gonna put this back. That piece is good. Let's look at this piece. Okay, we can delete all the stuff that we don't, oops, did I just hit a one? Sorry, delete. Delete all the slice results that we don't need. <clears throat> all right, delete that, okay. This piece as well, this is 12.8 by 1.7. So let's rotate this. It's now 12 by 7, 10.8 by 9.2. So you can definitely cut that on your, on your 12 by 12 map. Okay, so we've got this out of the way. Let's delete this. I think each one of these letters, let's see, let's ungroup this and see how big our letters are. I should have looked at that. Okay, good. So our letters are about seven inches. So, and this can be ungrouped. So each one's gonna cut separately, which is great. So let's bring that down over here. Oh, I'm at 50% again. Let me zoom out. We'll move this over. We'll ungroup it. Each one of these letters will be cut separately. Um, I would do, you know, that same blue glitter cardstock. It'll look great. So the letter D is three inches. Okay. All right. And then each one of these pieces should be separate too. So let's look at that. So we'll take this, ungroup it, <clears throat> and these letter or these blocks. Yeah, you should be able to cut all these blocks, right? Let's look at the flags. Same thing with the flags. We'll ungroup it. So this sign is actually pretty easy to do. Um, and it's gonna look really, really pretty because you're not gonna see any of the seams. The seam so far is in this gold bracket, which is teeny. Look how small those little brackets are, right? And then we have it in the blue, but we already solved it by cutting where the H is gonna be and we're using glitter cardstock. Um, so we need to do this thing. Um, this needs to be cut up into three pieces. The reason why it can't be in two is it's so wide that you're not gonna be able to rotate it and do it diagonal like we did. The reason why you can do this one is because it's long, but it's thin. So that with it being thin, it allows us to rotate it, 
but this is too big. This is gonna require us to slice it in three places. Where I would slice it is not along the lines, right? Because that would be one long seam. You wanna cut, slice this up like here, right? You're gonna have a little seam here and a little seam here. Not even noticeable. Um, let's look to see how long our sticks are. So here are our flagpoles. Our flagpoles are gonna be great because it's 10.5 is the longest one. So yeah, your flagpoles are gonna be awesome. Let's ungroup that. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so we just have this and our background to do. So we're almost done. This is gonna be a great sign. Um, all right, so let's take out a square so that we can slice it. Um, and let's make this 11 inches so that we know whatever we slice is going to be able to, you know, we can cut it on the Cricut. So I would do it like right here. So nowhere near the line, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, you can't see this. Give me one second, let me move things around. Let me move this over, okay. So here's our square and our gold piece. Um, I Here's my 11 by 11 cardstock. So I wanna make sure it covers over here and it's not on the, not on a long line over here. So this looks good. I'm gonna grab this and slice. <clears throat> and remember, we can get rid of the slice results. So we don't need this and we don't need the square. And here's our first piece. Our first piece is almost 11 inches by 8.7. And I'm gonna rotate it just so that you can see what I'm talking about. See, when you rotate it, this thing is so long, it doesn't help us at all, right? Like this is a, a nightmare, 12.5 by 11.6. It's not gonna let you cut. So anyway, <laughs> let's bring in another square because we need to break down this piece. And I would probably slice it maybe right here, either this rectangle or this rectangle. Let's make this 11 inches as well so that we kind of get a better feel for where we need to slice it. And I would do that. So let's grab these two items and slice. I'm excited for this person doing the sign. This is gonna look really, really good. It's gonna be a great birthday or a party prop. And you can take pictures, it's gonna, um, whenever you use glitter cardstock, it photos really, really well, and it's just gonna look really good. Okay, so we've got all our pieces. The only thing we have left is our background. So let me move all this stuff out of the way. So in fact, you know how we, let, and let me save this. We did, um, we did this at 30 inches. I feel as if you could do it um, even a little bit bigger. I think our, not that much bigger, but maybe 34 inches, 36 inches. I don't know if that's worth it to you to, you know, make it that much bigger. Um, all right. So here's this sign. So let's build our grid. So when I have the solid background, I'm going to move all this stuff out of the way so it doesn't get it. Okay. Um, I like to build a grid of squares because I want to make sure that everything lines up and is flushed with each other so we don't have any gaps and we don't have any overlays. That's important because that's really going to screw you up when you piece this together. Um, and it just helps us when we're putting it together that you know your four corners meet. So it may take a little bit longer than the way some other um, YouTubers do it, but I promise you, like anytime that you run into an issue, when you go back to having it this way, it's gonna help you solve your issues. If you need to remake something or you need to figure something out, it's much easier this way. I promise, promise. All right, let's bring in our first square. Okay, so we're gonna make it 11 inches. 
and technically you can cut 11 and a half by 11 and a half, right? But um, I don't like dealing with half, in half inches. So let's put this one right here. Let's look at this again. It's 30 inches by, okay. So we basically need to build three columns, right? Because each column is 11 inches. So you're gonna need three because two would only be 22 inches, right? <clears throat> and then you're gonna need two rows. So we're gonna need six squares total. Here's our first square. We're gonna go to the position feature and we're gonna round to the nearest whole number. So 3.9 becomes four, 1.9 becomes two. And what we're basically telling design space is your X coordinate is the one running across. So we're saying go over four units and go down two units and here's the beginning of our square. So we're gonna duplicate that square put it really close to the first one, and then you just round again. 15.05 becomes 15, it's already at two, and I'm gonna show you the math behind it. So this first square is at four, right? And my square is 11 inches, so four plus 11 is 15, and there's 15, so I know these are butting up against each other. Okay, let's duplicate that one, and put it really close to the middle one, and round 26.2 and it's already at two perfect so now we have three squares perfectly flush with each other let's grab all three squares so hit the shift key go over to your right hand side panel and grab all of the squares and it's taken a moment okay then duplicate and we're going to make that set flush with the top set so see, it didn't even take that long, right? Okay, so put it really close, and then it's already at four, this needs to be 13. All right, so we have our six squares. Go over to your right-hand side panel, scroll all the way down to the bottom, grab our big piece, so this is it, right? Bring it to the front, arrange center front. We wanna make sure that where we're slicing, we're not slicing off anything. We want six big pieces, and what I mean by that is, and sometimes there's nothing that we can do about it, okay? But this is something that I wouldn't want. Forget the fact that it's off, off the grid. I would not want something like this. The reason is because this seam is gonna come down and it's gonna cut off this tip of the flag here and here. I'm gonna have two small little pieces that I need to keep track of and tape back together. We don't want that. So we want to make sure that when we're slicing right here, that these are big pieces, like, okay, this is pretty good. I mean, okay, so this part gets cut off. It just is what it is. We can tape that back together. At least it's not a small piece. Now, all the other flags are intact. Um, Oh, I don't like this. This little piece is coming off. So let's move this over like that. And let's move this up a little bit. Okay, so now all our pieces are big. This I like. We don't have any small pieces. And let's slice. We have to slice one square at a time with the image because you can only slice two things at one time. So it's the image and one square. So let's start in the corner and grab this and slice. And then grab this corner, which you can't really see because my face is there. <laughs> but I'm just gonna slice it and then we'll slice over here. This sign is gonna be so cute. Um, I'm not a big Disney person, although you might not be able to tell that from all my videos because I get so many requests for Disney stuff, but um, I think this is a pretty cool sign. This is gonna look really, really good. Okay, and then we just have the bottom, so let's grab this corner and slice. And slice okay I think we've gotten everything so let me zoom back out and what I like to do is I like to move my pieces over at this point to make sure that all my pieces cut properly 
and that I'm not missing any piece or anything like that. So you can see these are big pieces, right? Um, this is a little bit thin, but you know, it's a long piece and so it'll be easy to tape back together. And these are nice big chunks. And then once you piece it all together and you make sure everything is good, you have all your six pieces. Let's grab all of this because we don't need it and delete. Now the other thing that I want to point out is this piece right here. This piece is hanging off by itself. So let's duplicate it and, and remove it. So you're going to go to contour and we're going to make it two separate pieces. Okay. So I'm going to hide this piece. So that leaves, or I'm going to hide the, the little flag. So it's going to leave me the big piece. So you see this piece doesn't have the flag. And then this piece, um, once it clicks on it, okay. This piece go to contour and we want to hide this big piece and just leave the little flag, right? So, and the reason why I did it is it may not come into play, but when it's all attached like that, it's hard to save space. Whereas now when I go to cut this piece, I can move this little guy, maybe even like right here. So let's see if we can save any space. So let's go, well, first let me save it. And then let's go to the make it screen because I want to show you some tips there. So we'll click on make it and we'll see how everything turns out. Okay, so just click okay on this one. This is our, the piece in HTV. I like HTV because it looks amazing against glitter cardstock. You can use vinyl if you want to, if that's all you have, or you can even use cardstock. The problem with cardstock is you need to tape or glue each one of these letters onto your piece, which is, it's a lot. And it's a lot of pieces to make sure that it's all lined up and straight. So that's why I, my preferred Medium will be HTV because it's going to look amazing, like I said, on glitter cardstock. You need to make sure that you mirror it and it's going to cut like this and it's going to be already straight and aligned for you. Okay, here is our peach paper. So on this one, what I would probably want to do is this because if you're going to save scrap paper, this is much more usable next time, a six or a five by 12 piece of paper, right? This one, uh, for some reason, this one's not on there. So we can just click on this, click on the three dots and move object. You want to move it to the previous page. So we're going to select this mat and then do the same thing. Um, or yeah, I think it's just leave it like this. So you have this little piece here for next time and a big chunk right here. All right, let's look at this piece. So this piece, it did it. That's so weird how they, I would move this. You And you know, you can even rotate this. You could do this. However your pieces are. Okay, let's look at this. Um, okay, so these two pieces, if you only have 12 by 12 cardstock, which I assume most of us do, you want to rotate it. Let's see if we can fit both of these on here. That would be amazing. So let's see, this one fits there. Let's grab this guy. Oh, they do both fit. Yay. Okay. So let me move this up a little bit more. Oops, this one. Okay, so you see we're above the 12 inch line. So this can be on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock on a 12 by 12 mat. Don't worry that this is still showing 12 by 24. If your paper is gonna cut above the 12 inch line, it's gonna, you can put in a 12 by 12 mat or a 12 by 24 mat, it doesn't matter. Okay, now we have this piece. This piece is pretty big, nothing we can do about that. This piece is pretty big as well, <laughs> as well as this piece. 
But this, we could put this with this and save on a sheet of cardstock. It's gonna be a pain in the butt to move all of them, but look, let's do it. Um, I, I won't do all of them, but I'm gonna show you one or two just so that you can see how I'm gonna maximize the paper. So let's go to this one. We're gonna put it on here. And I'm gonna rotate this. And I'm gonna stick this inside. So all my pieces are gonna fit in here. Um, let's go grab the next piece. Well, that's not the piece, this is the piece. Click on the three dots, move object. I mean, obviously the smaller ones will fit, but the long ones we wanna get inside the banner. So we can move this one, rotate this. Perfect. Just make sure that nothing overlaps because then you're gonna, it's gonna cut through. But the small, pe smaller pieces can go up here and, or if they can all fit in here, that'd be great because then you have scrap paper here that you, is more usable. But that's what I would do with those two pieces. And then look at our green. For some reason it's separated. The other thing that you could do is you could change the mat and say it's 12 by 24. It'll put all three pieces on one mat. And like I said before, it really doesn't matter as long as you're above the, oh, where did my piece go? Oh my gosh, I changed it to 12 by 24 and it still has it on this map. Normally, if I change it to 12 by 24, it would have put all three pieces on my 12 by 24 map. <laughs> so my little trick didn't really work this time. <laughs> um, all right, let's see, is it here? Okay. So you could do it like we did all the other pieces or however, you know, scrap paper if you have it, whatever. All right, here's our blue. Okay, and then here's our long blue. Let's see what's going on here. So this long one, let me see. Oh, we have quite a few pages of the blue. So... Let's see how we're gonna make this work. So this piece here, let's see. I'm tempted, okay, so I'm gonna try something. Click on the three dots, move object. And I'm gonna move it to this one. You may think I'm crazy. Let's see if we can make this work. So this little guy, I'm gonna rotate. Like that. Oh, it's so, oh, it didn't work. I was hoping it would fit in here. <laughs> um, does it work like this? No. Okay, so we're gonna have to move it again. Okay, move object. Um, guess I would move it back to this mat. If you have a 12 by 24 mat. If you don't, you would just create a new mat. So let's move this down. And we can move all these pieces in. feels like Tetris, right? <laughs> well, where can all my pieces fit? Um, you can make this better, but on this one, assuming you only have 12 by 12 cardstock, you want to rotate this. So that it fits. Um, and that's it. All these pieces are good, I think. It's gonna be a beautiful sign. I'm excited for the person. All right, let me know what you think. Give me the feedback. I really appreciate it. If you have special requests, let me know as well because this is how I got to this project. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.